This is a particularly special time when we we become afraid of all the people and all the religions and so on, sometimes with reasons. But I would like to introduce you to a man that I came across on YouTube. He was singing a song I wrote called The County Down. <laughs> he is an imam from based in London. And you'd never know what this man would do when he comes up here. <laughs> Please welcome Sheikh Dr. Muhammad Al Husseini. It's, it's a bit like having Bono doing backing vocals, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, dude.
25 years now. And uh, you wonder how uh, an E-man, professor in Oxford, medical doctor, uh, someone who is doing wonderful work between Christians and Muslims and Jews, would come to be singing a Shano's song like that. <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, I think the whole story, in a nutshell, is just the search for belonging. Uh, Shlik Gago is a search, uh, is, is, a, is a song of exile and a sense of uh, a search for home. And I guess uh, growing up as a second generation uh, person of immigrant background and with all the terrible things going on in the world, many of which are perpetrated by my community, there's always been this search for where I belong. And um, I've got a big mouth and I shoot my mouth off about some of the terrible things that Muslims have done and, and how we need to engage these questions with free speech and with honesty and clarity. And, and you end up on the margins. And one of the things that I've very much learned from my Christian brothers and sisters is that that's where God lives. And um, sometimes you have the family that you're born in, sometimes you have the family that have taken you in. And I kind of appeared as this waif on the doorstep of the Irish music scene, and I'm just so honoured. Uh, I can't tell you how honoured I am um, to be welcomed into the family. I started playing classical violin from the age of six, um, and always loved the Irish musical tradition, but for many years just didn't feel entitled, really, because it's a, it's a tradition that's so attached to a, to a people, to a, uh, to a community. Um, and, and it was really just kind of during my, um, during my during medical school, you know, I, I kind of slight sort of rebellion against all the elitism and status consciousness of my medical family and, and all the stuffiness of university life. I really found my real home in an Irish pub in the east end of town and uh, you know, just kind of starting to learn the fiddle which is a, such a different instrument to the violin in many respects. And I, I'm, I'm just a beginner, just learning and, and I feel very proud and humbled to be part of that learning process. Well, learning process, you won, you won the, the Gaelic Vice of Ireland. <laughs> I saw you on the John Snow program on yeah. BBC4. With a silly tie, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, around here, they might, they wouldn't ask you, but uh, they might think, are you a Protestant or a Catholic? <laughs> uh, are, are you uh, Shia or Sunni? Um, well, I've got a very, very Shia name, um, but I, and I'm sure we were Shia at some point. Sunni on my mother's family were, sorry, we were Shia, uh, but we, we are, we're a Sunni. Uh, by background, but you know, I realise this family audience. But you know, there was a time I'd tell the story. There's a, a time in, in, in Belfast uh, at the um, at the uh, Europa bus station. I, came, I was on the way to see a friend of mine in Balana, County Mayo, uh, and I had my fiddle with me. And there was a little guy who just came up to me. Um, just totally not. I really didn't feel threatened until a little guy just came up to me and um, and he says, "I've seen you on TV." I've seen you on TV with your, with your paddy music, you take it. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is a slur that I can live with, actually. <laughs> Sean O'Reilly... <laughs> Sean O'Reilly would have said that Irish music has got more in common with Eastern music than it has with uh, European classical music, for example. Uh, would you see or feel any uh, comparisons between Shano's singing and uh, the, the Quran singing. Well, absolutely. Well, I mean, as an imam, um, I trained as an imam after after medicine, and and in Cairo, Al Azhar Sharif, which is a really ancient um, sort of seat of Sunni um, Islamic learning, and and one of the strongest courses that, that, that you're required to do is is the art of recitation. So you have to learn. Uh, the, the exact sort of caesuras, the, the spacings and the rhythm and also the, the, the melodies uh, for reciting the and, and the highly kind of ornamented way of singing. Um, you know, it, 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 to this day, um, I'm not sure I'm doing an authentic job of it because I really feel I'm kind of singing sacred uh, Arabic verses in Irish when I, when I sing Irish songs. So, you know, it's kind of a, still a journey for me. 
Well, could you give us an example of, of the Quran and Tanya show? Well, this is, this is uh, um, the Surah Al-Fatiha, which is the opening um, um, surah of the Qur'an, followed by uh, Surah Quraysh, which is a, uh, a really a prayer for protection, um, you know, talking about the tribe, of, the tribe that the Prophet of Islam belonged to, which is, um, and, and their journeyings, and how God is called upon to, to provide us our sustenance, you know. Um, <clears throat> الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهتنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين لإله في قريش إله فيهم رحلة شتاء وصيف فليعبد رب هذا البيت الذي يطعمهم من جوء وآمنهم من خوف Thank you very much, a Christian uh, evangelical minister in Belfast, Pastor McConnell, uh, said some things uh, about Muslims. Uh, mm -hmm. we didn't can't trust Muslims, uh, they were the spawn of Satan and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, he was brought to court and he, there weren't too many witnesses in his defense. But one was Muhammad al Husseini. You came over to the court. Uh, why did you defend uh, Pastor McConnell? Well, Pastor McConnell had, in his church, given a sermon of He's a fiery Presbyterian, sort of John Knox type um, preacher, and he'd given a sermon in which he talked about Islam being satanic, and that he didn't trust Muslims. And, um, and for that, what happened was uh, somebody uh, um, put some pressure on, the, um, on his community in the Belfast Islamic Centre, and, and followed that up by, by reporting Pastor McConnell to the police. And like everything else, in regrettably in this this part of Ireland, there's, there was a kind of a politically charged basis for it all. Anyway, I, I was I have my entire life as an academic struggled to defend the right to freedom of speech. And um, in the club, one, the organisation I own work for, I've, I've taught in university life and worked in university life most of my career, but. Um, but now I work for an organisation that's actually got a strong Christian ethic that focuses very much on the persecution of Christian minorities, particularly in Muslim countries, particularly in the Middle East, uh, from Africa, Nigeria, all the way through to Pakistan. And so, you know, understanding where these people are, Christians and minority Muslim groups and Yazidis and all these other minorities that are suffering oppression, um, to, to defend freedom of speech, freedom of belief, uh, really means something when you've seen what they've had to go through and likewise you know we've seen the horror of the last couple of days of the slaughtering of this this poor priest um, uh, Father Jacques Amel in France so it's coming right here to our shores and 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 so I, I, I've always fought very hard to defend the freedom to discuss to debate and if necessary to criticize religious belief um, because the reality on the ground for us is that yes we can talk about Islamist terrorism and extremism and intolerance being linked to perhaps, social factors, economic factors, lack of democracy or sometimes foreign policy issues. But we've also, with honesty and with integrity, got to be able to talk about the theological basis for it. And, and to say that our sacred texts, and that includes some chapters in some parts of the Old Testament, Deuteronomy, you know, the, the, the conquest of, of Canaan and, and the killing of people there. Some chapters in the Quran are extremely violent. And, and so when people like Pastor McConnell, from his perspective, come forward and, and say those things, albeit in certain terms ways that I disagree with quite strongly, this is a matter for civil society, for all of us, for you and me, 
to, to engage in open and honest discussion and debate. And part of that, part of that gift to this island and to the world is, is the work that you do, Tommy, in bringing together people who do not, are not supposed to be talking to each other, to talk and to engage about, about this. And I, I just kind of thought, you know, just kind of comparing uh, Pastor McConnell's humanity to that of my dad, who's even more stubborn than Pastor McConnell, I can tell you. <laughs> and and, and I, I guess there's, there are levels at which we can engage. Um, I think we need to talk to everybody. Um, we need to talk to people who have extreme views. I'm not at all comparing Pastor McConnell to, for example, a violent Islamist extremist, but there are, there, are, there are levels of dialogue, such as, for example, engaging with people at a, at a, at a practical, at a, at a sort of a high level, which can be problematic because by sharing a platform with a particular representative of a particular political organisation or, 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 or extremist religious group, you're kind of giving legitimacy to that group. So that kind of dialogue can be problematic. But then there's also engaging with people um, on the level of having an honest human dialogue, such as you've, you've, you've pioneered, really, and, and, and espoused sort of exchanging different views um, in a spirit of, of, of kind of human engagement. And then finally, there's kind of the, the very, very human level of just kind of recognizing the, the, the reflection of one's parents and of, of people in one's life, uh, um, you know, and you're not, I'm not going to change, you know, my dad's views about life aren't going to change, but we can engage uh, these views on a, on a very human and simple level and, and, and share uh, the beautiful universal language of music and the arts, and so defending music and the arts is, is right at the heart of, of, of the challenge that we have uh, to, to defeat that kind of narrow um, outlook and, and the forbidding of music, you know, ISIS banning coloured pencils, you know, all that kind of stuff. It, it just doesn't it, doesn't it set a pattern for what, what extremism is all about. It's about constricting freedom of, of thought. More Muslims have been killed as a result of these, these extremist actions than, than any other group. And so it's actually a kind of a nihilism generally. But nonetheless, at the same time, we with honesty and integrity have to acknowledge that whereas uh, Christianity and, to, and, and reformer, reform traditions within Judaism have gone through an enlightenment and we don't stone people anymore based on Old Testament teaching, we don't, um, you know, women, women don't always cover their heads in churches, you know, and, and, and there is a movement towards greater understanding and, and, and recognition of, of the evolution of religion. That process has not happened within my tradition and everybody's suffering for it. It's about fostering what we so need in this world, which is better quality disagreement. And that's, that's what it's about. Well, how about you think? Thank you very much. We could talk so much about this. Uh, but before you go, Mohammed, we're going to take a break after this. And uh, we're going to get young Maisie up. Uh, I know she's uh, getting a little bit late for her, but we'll have Maisie tell me to start the second half. And we'll have some beautiful music. And we'll have our Hall of uh, our Creative Arts winner as well. But uh, maybe we'll get one last song from Mohammed. And <laughs> Uh, this is called uh, Easter Snow. Um. <clears throat> At twilight in the morning, as I rolled out upon the dew, with my morning cloak around me, and tending all my flocks to view. I <laughs> 